Yeah, it looks good. There it is, there it is. Like the hat, like the hat. Coach just put this in my locker. I'm pretty sure he did. I asked him a few weeks ago. You know, it's fire. What do you think of it? I didn't know what it stood for uh, when I first, like when I first got here, because he always wore it, but I didn't really know. I think it's dope though. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. All right, so it's been a couple of days now since you got the contract. Obviously, regular season comes to an end, and now you're uh -huh. where you at right now? You just chilling at home? I'm just chilling at home. I just got home. Um, I had a workout this morning. Uh, got my workout in and had like a little small little interview. And I don't know. I'm just chilling at home right now. My little brother's in there just knocked out. He needs to wake up. <laughs> so your brother lives with you then? Uh, he actually just got out here um, last week. Uh, I'm just going to, I want him to see, you know, Arizona be around me. I haven't been around him in a minute. So just give him a, a different perspective, you know, a different view of life. And, you know, help, you know, motivate just a little bit more. Yeah. I think you picked the right days too. It's like finally down in like the 70s in the next couple of days. I know you guys yeah. got a little bit of extra time right now. So it's cold, it's cold in Kansas City. It's probably snowing right now. So <laughs> he ain't trying to go home. Yeah. Yeah. So now you've got him out here. I know I know family's probably really big for you. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. But what have the uh, last few days been like for you, just kind of soaking in? I was there against the Kings, and before the game, I heard fans shouting your name more than I'd ever heard before. Like, they're congratulating you and things like that. For real, I was, like, I wasn't expecting that. And then also, you know, I don't when I work out, I'm the first one to work out on the court. So I don't really get the fans to, you know, watch me work out. So just with my little workout, you know, hearing fans screaming, hey, yes, congratulations, yeah, yes. I'm hearing that more and more, which until I, you know, I want to get to that point where it's a whole arena, you know. So, you know, I, hey, it's, it's different. I'm still in the days. I keep saying I'm still in the days because it's like, dang, you know, I, I have an NBA contract, not a two-way contract, man. Just, I have a, I did it, but it's, I'm not done, you know. I, it's just the beginning, so. I'm still in the days, but that's dope. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look like a natural adapting to it. I saw the kicks you were wearing on Sunday. They were to spread off his awareness, the custom Kobe's mm -hmm. you had. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the section you were signing autographs for before the game, that was a group of kids um, on the spectrum as well, correct? That was kids. That was kids for, you know, kids that had autism, um, teenagers that had autism, you know, family members. You know, I just, I just wanted to show that I'm supporting them also. Um, I've been supporting Autism Awareness Month for a little over 18 years, to be honest with you. My sister did. My sister has lived in Oklahoma City, um, and she's been, you know, teaching autistic kids for for a long time. And, you know, this month, um, I've always, always supported this month, especially because of her, um, and now even more, you know, so, yeah. So is that your biggest connection with it, just your sister teaches it, and you've kind of been accepting my, my of that for a while? My sister, you know, also, people don't really know my son has autism. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm doing whatever I can to support and, you know, just trying to be there however, however way I can, um, which is tough because I, you know, I, I haven't seen him in a minute, so I'm, I'm working with that. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just something that, that, that holds, you know, it's close to me even before my son was, you know, diagnosed with it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, what's what's that like for you? I mean, obviously your schedule is crazy, but you still you still make the time for that. I know I've noticed your tattoos on your shoulders. I'm assuming those are your kids, right? On your shoulders. They're my baby, my babies. Uh, I mean, yeah, I I I can do what I can. Um, it busy. So this summer, hopefully, I'll get a chance to you know go and do whatever I can um, to be there and to support and to you know help any way possible. Uh, my daughter, she's always out here. Well, not always, but she she's out here a lot. Um, she loves it out here. She she just called me yesterday, a couple days ago. Hey, daddy, can I when, when can I come back to Arizona? And she's joking around. Ishmael, I better be able to come back to, to Arizona. You know, so she she's just she's crazy. I love her. Yeah, I mean, you got to get her out here for the playoffs now because I know I mean, you weren't here last year, but this city rallies behind the Suns come playoff time. I, know. I, mean, I, I heard I heard it's a different I heard it's a different vibe when it comes to playoff. I mean, I'm ready. I'm ready. And I can't wait to see. I, I heard that the fans are. I know the fans are, are crazy now, but they. If you if you got fans that come up to me and say we're we're crazy, but wait until playoffs, and they give you that look like wait until you see this crowd during playoffs, and I'm like, 
oh, this is a different vibe. Then okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm new to Arizona last year, so I saw it for the first time. My boss would always tell me, "It's a Suns town. It's a Suns town." I was like, "I don't know. I've never been here. I only knew for a while. It was it was a bit of a struggle for the team. I saw it firsthand last year. It's 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 different. It's crazy, man. I can't. I gotta see this. I can't wait. And then I'm gonna be, you know, I'm I'm gonna be in like the uniform, man. I've been thinking about that. Like, dang, I'm a I'm a rookie, bro. Like, I'm a, I'm a rookie. I'm on the number one team in the world. I just be thinking, like, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> It's all soaking in for you. This year, I mean, obviously, you're coming off a long journey going back and forth between football and basketball, playing overseas, getting a chance in the summer league with the Raptors, and then finally finding a home in Phoenix. I mean, what's it been like for you? What's been the experience for you just kind of, especially before you got the contract, balancing, like, I don't know how long I'm here, but I'm trying to make the most of it. Like, what was that like for you? Just every day is something new. You know, every year is something new, and I, I try to, like, like, you know, I don't take any days for granted when it comes to certain things, you know. I don't take anything for granted because literally last season I was living in Strasbourg, France. The year before I was living in Vesta, a little village in, in, in Germany. The year before I was in Nuremberg, a couple months prior to that, I was playing football, you know. So I, my journey, this, every, it's just different, you know. Not too many people do that. Um, but it's just... I'm just taking it all in, literally taking it all in because like, I look back and it's like, dang, I was just there, you know, and I'm here now. And you, you, I'm not the type of person to ask what's next because I don't really live in the future. I, I live day to day, every day. So I'm, I would try to learn something new every day and you never know what can happen tomorrow. Like, like literally, I just said, this, this game could be taken away from me tomorrow, today, any second. You know what I mean? So I'm just living it up, having fun, you know, being 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 myself. I'm not changing for anyone. I'm not changing for, you know, for the fame or whatever. I'm not famous. I'm not a superstar. I'm myself. I'm Ishmael, 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 Ishmael strong man. <laughs> um, but no, I'm just myself, man. I'm just taking it all in every single day. I got to ask this because when I talk to people on different journeys and I've been on my own different things with mental health and working full time. A lot of things that I've learned are just some of the books I've read that's how I've kind of processed things that like I kind of find a way to understand life a little bit. How have you sort of figured out life along your journey? Is it mostly just from living it? Are there things you talk to or read or people you talk to about it? Or how does that work for you? A little bit. Of, okay, so I'm going to say this. As far as reading a book, I, my mind goes all the way. I could read like two pages the next thing, you know, I said, oh, what was that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but no, nah, I think it's, I think it's just living, to be honest with you. Like pe some people don't know this. Like I've been, I've been on my own since I was probably 15 years old, to be honest, you know? So I think living and living from, you know, learning, growing up as a kid and then moving to Maryland, you know, starting all, not starting all over, but getting away from my family at the age of 15, you know, I start living, like, I can't rely on people to you know, help me do this and do that. And and so it's, I think it's just living. I ask questions as I get older, yes, talking to, talking to people, talking to my dad, talking to my mom, talking to my sister, you know, people that have been through things, people, you know, that have been in my position, you know, um, former teammates, you know, like just, if they go through some things, I might, you know, ask them once they're comfortable, you know, talking about certain things, hey, how do you, how did you react in this situation? How do you approach these situations with this? You know, what's your approach? But also, I asked my mom because as a man, I as a man, I still want a woman's a woman's perspective on certain things. I take myself out of my shoes and put myself in their shoes. You know, so just a little bit of everything, uh, living, and then also just you know talking to people. And on that note too, so something I ask everybody when I do these sit downs is if you can go back. For your case, it's probably five, six years at this point, and tell yourself where you are now and what you're growing and working towards. What would you tell yourself? Is there anything different that you would have wanted to know at that point? Nah, because I feel like, I mean, I'll give myself some, some advice, but I wouldn't change anything. The re and I say that because if I, I, that's good, I just talked to my dad about this. <laughs> Literally <laughs> yesterday. Um, if I change one thing throughout my journey, I wouldn't be who I am now. I wouldn't be ish. 
I wouldn't be my as my parents, as my dad, I wouldn't be male man. I wouldn't be strong man. Me and Kel wouldn't have that relationship. Me, me and me, I would not be on the same team as the point guard. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't have a vet like Jay Crowder. I wouldn't have a coach like Mom. So I would not be here if I changed one thing in my past. So I mean, only thing I would say, you know, give myself is there'll be bumps in the road. There'll be bumps in the road. Keep your chest out chin up, live, you're going to mess up, you're going to fail. There's nothing wrong with failing. There's nothing wrong with getting waived. There's nothing wrong with getting cut by an NFL team. There's nothing with come, There's nothing wrong by coming off the bench and only playing six seconds, 12 seconds, a minute, two minutes. It's nothing wrong with that. Live your life, have fun, and take it, and take every day and, and make it. Oh, snaps. <laughs> you're good. good. What happened? Is that me? Yep, you're good now. Your camera's back. No, my fault. But yes, yeah, like you know, take take every day and and make it out to be something. You know, no matter what it gives you. That was really good. I think motivational speaking might be might be in your future. Oh no, I can't speak in front of a lot of people. You can't. Okay, you can't be like Javale before the game the other night on the mic trying to talk to the crowd. You can't do that. I thought it was supposed to be me. I got a text message and said, "Hey, you're the rookie. Make sure you get a speech ready." I said, "Who? Who?" <laughs> And I got a text message like an hour later. I got a text message an hour later. Um, and they said, you're okay. So JaVale took over there. You can get that if you need to get that too. No worries. Yeah, let me, I'm sorry. It's not, I'm not take you. This is all live? We're all on. Hey, these, these are podcasts. We let it roll. We let it happen. We're getting an inside look at Ish's life right now. Oh, morning. Come on. Office send it to do the uh, carpet repair. The carpet repair? Yeah. So what time to do can, it? You, can you wait for like a few? I'm gonna interview. Like I don't know. Probably five minutes or so. About yeah. five, ten minutes. Let's take a look. Yeah, like, come, on. come on, see what I need. It's right there. Right going into the main. Right there, yes sir. Hey, it happens, it happens. We've all been there. Yeah. Okay. I hey, know this is this is the beauty of it. I love loving this stuff. Roll, we're getting an inside look. I mean, people forget yeah. too. I mean, you're an athlete, but you're a person just like us. Nobody knocks on my door, so I'm like, I didn't order food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. Um, I wanted to get in a little bit too. So where does where does mailman and strongman come for you? Um, so so mailman. Okay, I'm gonna say this one thing. I'm gonna let the world know this. My mom hates this. My mom hates the name Ish. I'm just saying, like, everybody, it's okay, you can call me Ish, but she's never called me Ish. She's never called me. I rarely hear my mom say it called me Ishmael, to be honest with you, and my dad. Um, but that's just them. That's my parents. They like where that came because people just shortened Ish, you know, Ishmael. Ish. Um, mailman, they've been calling me Mailman since I was a, since I was born. I can I can close my I can be in the middle of uh, millions of people and I hear two voices and they can yell out mailman. I don't know exactly who they are. My mom comes to the majority of my games now and I can be in warm-ups. This is something, this is something that's always happened. And I could be, I can be in the middle of a shot and you know, it's, I hear mailman and I'll go right to that voice. Cause I know it's, I'm, I'm wired, it's wired. I can hear it. Now everybody don't start calling me mailman because you know, but um, it's just, that's just a, I don't know why everybody thought I call myself Melman because of Carmelo. Malone. No, <laughs> I, no, I'm sorry, everyone. That's not why. Um, but I've always, they've always called me that. Strongman became, became Kale. Kale called me Strongman. Um, and it's just because of the football thing. It's literally just because of the football thing. It's, it's pretty cool. Well, on your latest IG post, too, I saw you had, like, the giant SpongeBob in there. for. for no, nah, somebody too. sent that to me on Twitter. So, I, I mean, I, when I'll be bored, I'll be on Twitter looking at whoever mentioned me. Uh, you know, and I, I respond back to people. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a no superstar. I'm going to respond back if, I, if there's nothing crazy. Then, you know, I'm not going to argue with you on Twitter because that's Twitter friends. I'm not going to do that. Um, but, no, nah, somebody tweeted that to me, and I was like, yo, that's dope. Man, <laughs> They call me the most a strong SpongeBob, the handsome SpongeBob, everything you can think of. It's the funniest thing ever. To me, I laugh, and that's why I reposted it. Yeah, that's cool. Was SpongeBob one of your favorite shows growing up? Oh yeah, for sure. I took a picture with SpongeBob. What was that? And um, is that San Francisco? No, not San Francisco. Sacramento. 
Who was having it on? I think it was Sack. I took a picture with SpongeBob after the game. I made sure I took a picture with him. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I got I got one or two more things for you here real quick too. Um, this is a question I get like I'll be watching a game with friends at a bar or living room or wherever, and something that comes up a lot with different friends they say I would love to just be a role player on an NBA team. If that was something where you're you don't know how much you're playing, but like you're there, what's that really like though? Because it seems like a fun time, but obviously you're still grinding and like wanting to find minutes at the same time. What's that really like? Me personally, I'm having fun. I'm just gonna let you know. You gonna I'm, I always have fun because I, I'm. I look at it like I'm. I'm getting paid to play basketball. I'm. I play basketball for a living. I take. A, I take. I play basketball for a living. You know. So I'm having fun. The moment that you stop. The moment that you're not having fun, you look at it like, oh, I'm going to work. It's my job. That is, you don't have the passion for. This. I have a passion for this. So if it's a role player, if it's a wire, it's my passion. Now, I'm grinding. <laughs> I'm grinding, I'm busting my butt because, you know, any, any time you, you have to be ready. But as a role player, there's a lot of role players in the NBA. People fail to realize that. There's a handful of, there's a, you can count on your hands how many superstars there are in the league and everyone else are role players. Even some superstars are role players. Some of one of the greatest small forwards that has played this game are role players. They're not the main person. So, it. I mean, you just got to stay ready. Stay ready because you never know if someone goes out. You got to know the scouting reports. You got to know the, the rotations and all that stuff because I, you might hear, ish, time to get to work. <laughs> you know, so I'm having fun. You're going to see me jump up, at, you know, bursting off the bench, having fun, you know, motivate whoever I need to motivate. That's just me. It's, that's what I'm supposed to do. That is why I'm on a roster. That is why I'm here and other guys aren't, you know? Like, yeah. You can be a role player for your whole career. Oh my, I'm not going to be a superstar. I'm not LeBron. I'm not Kobe. I'm not Michael Jordan. The roles get reversed sometimes. When you drop 20 in the fourth quarter, you got Book and Paul and Jay Crowder, all them yeah. hyping you up there too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty dope, bro. <laughs> I got a play call for you. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, you get that too. Um, I gotta ask this because it's 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 playoff time now. What what's the best part of this team? Like, what makes the Phoenix Suns the team that's gonna get over the hump this year? What is it that makes this team special? They 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 felt that before. The the team has felt, you know, what it feels like to lose. Book has a like, that's like that might be one of the iconic. Like after that, after I think after the last, you know. After the buzzer went off, book looks over. He said, damn. But you can tell once he said that, he was like, time to get back to work. And that trickled down to everybody else. You can, you can feel it. Every single day, someone says something about playoffs. This is not playoff basketball. Let's get, let's, let's walk in. Let's play our game. This, this is now, you know, you hear that every day. Even though timeouts. Even during even during warmups, this is not this this. Let's get to playoff basketball. We're a playoff team. We're a finals team. We're a, we're a championship team. Let's go do it. So that's the mindset. It's been the mindset since day one. Since I walked in October twenty first, like that is the mindset, and I felt it and I love it. It's gonna be a totally different team, but a better team, because now you see everybody's brain quick. That's how it is. Last thing for you too. Coming into playoff time now, you're a full-time member. What do you want Suns fans to know about Ishmael Ish Wainwright? What do you want them to know about hey, man, you? I'm, I'm here. I'm here to do whatever I can to help, to help this team, this organization, win, win the championship, do whatever, I, do whatever I, my job is to do. Is to be. Um, I appreciate all of y'all, every last one of y'all. And no, DA, I'm not from Texas. <laughs> um, but no, nah, I'm just... I appreciate all love and support, and, and it means the world to me. Um, and uh, this is only the beginning, and that's what the game do. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome, Mitch. Well, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck heading into the playoffs, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you get after it. I appreciate that, brother.